All right, so I've applied a default, just a, a gray material, so that I didn't have to look at that ugly checkerboard thing. Uh, but we notice that we can't really see any of the shapes. This is because we're currently in unlit mode. If I go to lit mode, uh, we notice that everything's dark because I don't have any environment lighting in my scene. So let's go ahead, uh, let's go in lit mode, or un uh, unlit mode, and let's go ahead and add, uh, by going to browser windows, actor class, let's go ahead and add some lights to our scene. So let's add a directional light. Uh, right click and add directional light here. And I'm gonna press space to change the gizmo to move, and I'm also going to add a skylight. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this and go to replace with skylight. And so now we have two actors. We have a skylight and a directional light. All right, so with these two lights, I'm going to actually, before I start making changes and modifying these lights, I'm going to go ahead and add a sky dome. I went in my content browser and I searched for sky, and I found this nice sunset sky dome. So I'm just going to drag it into my scene. Notice that everything went dark. That's because the sky dome is actually projecting a shadow. So let's go to static mesh actor, uh, go to lighting, and uncheck cast shadow. There we go. And now it's unlit, so it won't be affected by the lights. Let's also go to movement location and center it. Uh, I just like to have everything centered at zero zero zero. And there we go. So let's go ahead and close the content browser and see what we're up against here. And it looks like we have uh, a nice uh, sky environment. I'm going to reposition the uh, sky dome so that the uh, sun is coming from this side here. Um, if I do this, it'll allow me to have some nice shadows with this directional light. So hit escape to deselect that. Uh, now I can position this light here and rotate it around this way and uh, get some nice uh, shadows going on here. I might want to actually go into the properties of this light um, and go to the light component. Now we have all of the uh, values that we can manipulate here. Alright, so I want to play with the uh, settings here and um, let's see, maybe I'll make the brightness a little lower, um, give it a different light color. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and play with this and then we'll review when I'm done. So I finished, and uh, you know, it's not it's not final media, so, and this is certainly not final lighting settings. But I have a bright brightness at 1.25. Change the light color and the shadow color. This is uh, the harsh dark shadows you're seeing. You change this color, and you get a little bit of a of a better shadow. And uh, yeah, I also ch made some changes to the uh, skylight. Change the light color and the brightness to 0.2. Uh, you typically want to have a pretty dim skylight, <clears throat> especially uh, in this kind of environment. So uh, there you go. So this is sort of my, if we go to game mode, uh, this is sort of my environment. I haven't built any shadows yet, but let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so to build lighting, we go to uh, build and uh, lighting. And uh, default setting should be fine. And this is what we get. Pretty ugly. Um, and the reason why the reason why this is pretty ugly is a we didn't spend a lot of time defining the secondary UVs, um, so it's not really using the UV space very well. Uh, but secondly, the resolution on the light maps is very low. So let's go ahead and show you how to change that. Open up the content browser, and let's find uh, let's get rid of the sky. Open up our package under mesh. All right, so let's open up the soccer field uh, static mesh. We have two settings here, the light map coordinate index and the light map resolution. The resolution uh, is currently set to 32. This is why our uh, shadow looks so low resolution. So if we bump this up to um, maybe a value of uh, 256, that should look a lot better. And I'll uh, do the same for these guys. Um, I'll just, uh, you know, 256 for all of them is fine. Um, Typically, you want to go on an individual basis depending on the importance of the mesh. Um, but again, block out material, I don't really care, right? Maybe I care for this one. Uh, since there's going to be a nice shadow on this one, I'll make it 512. This is going to increase the rendering time by a lot. So just be careful and understand that when you're doing this. Or, excuse me, the build time, not the render time. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, build lighting and see what happens. I'll probably cut away 
um, <clears throat> just because I don't want to sit here and uh, have you guys sit through the entire build process. So, Okay, so it's done. And uh, let's close this. So yeah, actually this looks a lot better. Our shadows look a lot better. And for our purposes, I think this looks pretty good. Um, all right, so what is a uh, soccer field without a soccer net? So I've gone ahead and added a quick little soccer net. Uh, go ahead and uh, also add a little soccer ball. And uh, we make it a physics asset so that we can actually go ahead and uh, pick it up with the gravity gun. And let's go ahead and add actor static mesh and ball static mesh. Okay. And uh, we're going to right click on the ball and we're going to convert to K actor. And let's go to the properties of the K actor. Let's make it. Um, uh, sorry, go to the K actor properties. And uh, change the limit max physics velocity. We want to do that. Um, well, why not? We'll make it on level start, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so let's see what we uh, what we got here. Uh, I'm going to uh, play an editor, and uh, here's our map. So, physicsing on, we can run around, pick the ball up. Nice shadows on the environment. Uh, we can run, we have collisions on everything, and yeah. So, I mean, if you were to, if you wanted to create a soccer game. Uh, this would be a great blockout map, and it you know it doesn't take but a few hours to do something quick like this. You don't worry about textures and uh, the geometry. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That pretty much sums everything up. Uh, please feel free to email me, uh, post any comments and questions, and please please rate my videos if you like it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. Also, it's Java Hawk. Thanks. Have a great day.